Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Word. In this module, I want to have a look at the difference between indents and tabs. So first of all, we'll have a look at indents followed by tabs. So let's get some text on the screen. Just use a bit of auto text that I've got. So to see indents, you need, you need the ruler on at the top of the screen. And if you haven't, which it isn't by default, you need to go to view and ruler and just tick the ruler on because on the ruler you can see not only the margin area but also where the left indent marker is and the right indent marker and also when we get onto tabs you'll see the tab markers as well so indenting so if i want to indent this paragraph i've got several options i can do i can click on the indent option at the top increase indent and you can see the marker moving across 1.27 centimeters every time i click that or go back that's where it jumps by alternatively i can sit my mouse on this rectangle part of this hourglass shape where it says left indent and then manually move it to a position of my choosing same on the right there's a right indent marker i can pull that in and bring that to wherever i want it to be Control Q is the key command to reset paragraphs. So you can see when I did Control Q there, both indents went back to where they started from. Now on the left indent, you've got some other features which are quite hard to repeat with a tab. If I put my mouse on the top triangle and move it across, you can see I'm creating what's called a first line indent in this paragraph. Now once you've split an indent like that, if I sit my mouse on the rectangle part, the left indent marker, I can move the whole paragraph maintaining that indent like that. And I can even go into the margin with it as well. Now to bring this back together, you just need to bring the triangles back. I, I can also move the bottom triangle to create a hanging indent, which is what you get when you do a numbered list. So these are all features that you can do with indents. And also in this paragraph group, there's a little arrow there, which goes into paragraph settings. You've got options here in the middle to set an indent. You can see the implications of it in the preview box. You've also got the first line option there, which I've just shown you. So you can use this box, click OK. There you go. And control Q should knock that off. So I've reset that back to its default position. Now, if I put a numbered list on, you see what happened there? You got a hanging indent. There's the first line because it's picking up whatever style is in this numbered list. So you've got different options here. You can see it's left aligned and there's a spacing and you can you can adjust that or change that if you want let's just get rid of this control q now control q got rid of the number but not didn't reset the paragraph so we'll have to do it manually now the chances of you doing a hanging hanging indent for any other reason than a numbered list is pretty minimal so i don't think you, i can't think of an example where you would do that it's nearly always on a numbered list like that and quite often people have the paragraph on the margin line and the numbered list in the margin so let's just put this back and get rid of this um now if i put show hide on what you've got there as part of this style is a tab marker look backspace that takes the number off so the style itself has got a tab with it i'll just take that off so that's indents that's a quick look at indents now let's have a quick look at tabs so the tab marker is i put the show hide on is that little arrow you just saw there so when i press my tab key i get um, a tab in to the paragraph now you haven't got a tab marker there because what's happened is i've pressed tab and autocorrect has changed it to an indent. You can see the first line indent appear at the top there. So if I change that back to a tab, so that's that's part of autocorrect, and you can change that or have that 
as it is now so it's quite a cool little feature but if, uh, if I undo that control Z so it's an indent if I press tab again it's maintaining the indent so you might not want that to happen so I'll just undo all of that so one tab get rid of the auto correct so it's a tab press tab again so now I've got tab markers coming across now the problem with tabs is when you start to type something and you've got tabs in a paragraph all sorts of weird and wonderful things can happen now so text is now um, wrapping around because there's a tab there so in my view tabs are not really ever any use for this type of thing where you're putting it in a paragraph if I just um, delete that and get a new paragraph it's quicker than undo, you want to undo take the show hide off for a second so what would you use tabs for and what are tabs so let's have a look at this if I wanted to set a little table up but not a table um, a list you can use tabs now on the ruler you've got some positions there's a little darker area just underneath the ruler so if I click just underneath the three and the six and the nine I'm putting left tabs so that gives me if I put the show hide on again when I press tab it jumps to that stop press tab it jumps to the next stop my cursor is you can see the cursor there and again so you basically backspace that what you would be doing there is you would type let's say test tab test tab test tab so you're just using a tab to, to align text in different parts of the screen now if I just get rid of everything and uh, just show you what you can also do let's say you want an address line here and another address line on the same line over on the right so if I put a left tab probably at 10 centimeters what I can do is start typing my first part of the line my address press tab and then you can type the next line or the first line of the second address when you press enter it comes back left you type in the second line you press tab you type in the second line you press enter and so on so that's a good example of when you might use a tab to get things on the same line in terms of addresses but what you mustn't do in my view is and I do see some videos on the internet and sadly from schools where they're telling people to tab across to do an address block over here like this so I want to get it at the 11 or uh, 10 points so instead of doing a tab at 10 centimeters and pressing it once I've created all these and then I'm doing my address now when I press enter that's just going to go back over there and I've got to do all that again so this is just nonsense to do it like this um, I don't know by the way enter so even if I did one tab at 10 I'm still jumping across and and having to type each time and now that's not lined up look so I need to start messing about with this to get it to line up or I might do a little space so there's all little things that can go wrong with tabs and I'm now going to get rid of all of them because if you need to do an address block over there you should definitely be using an indent so I'm just going to pull the indent marker across to 10 and then what happens here is it stays wrapped around over on that indent marker until you've finished and taking it back across to the left as you can see there as I'm typing it's staying in position it's not shooting left and then when I um, type that wrong when I finish my address I can do control Q which will take it back it's gone back or I can drag it back and I'm ready to do the next part of the address but whatever dear sir madam and then my letter so in terms of tabs or indents indent wins a battle for this type of example tabs wins the battle if you needed to have an address block on both sides in the same line um, but let's have a look at where tabs also come in quite cool I think and it's it's using the decimal tab if you've got to line up figures you've got a decimal tab feature now in the corner here you've got the left tab that I've been using but if I click that you've got a center tab which 
does the, if I put this at four and just type, it just does this. If I type my name, it just moves out either side from that tab, the text does. Now, if I press enter again, pull that tab down and click this again, I've got a right tab. So I'll put that there, press tab, type my name again. So this is just kind of going to come in from that tab in from the right. So there's the right tag that's lining it up, coming in and going left. The text is going left where the L bit points. Normally you would have that over on the right hand side for, for um, in headers and footers, for example, you've got a right tab where you might put the date. Uh, if I press enter again, and the one I want to talk about is this next one. I'll pull that one off is the decimal tab with a little st full stop after it put that at four cent centimeters press tab what this is doing is lining up on the decimal point tab like so tab take the show hide off for a second so you can see it's all lined up on the decimal tab like so Doing it without a decimal tab is going to be slightly different. If I pull that one off, uh, go back down there. If I get down one, let's see if I can do it with a different tab. Pull the decimal tab off. So I'm going through the rest of these. So that's just a line. There's the indent marker. That's a right tab. So if I tab, that's a left tab, should I say. If I tab to that, 1, 2.21. You see the difference there now so we'd have to it's lining up on the first character not the decimal so if you had one two three point two six it you no know, this thing starts going out of sync a little bit it's lined up but it's not lining up on the decimal point but it's totally up to you how you want it now it would be very difficult to do this with an indent so the tab wins in this example lining up uh, on the decimal point now, in addition to these, the way I'm doing the tabs at the moment from there, you can do this. So if I go into the paragraph block again, down the bottom, you've got a button that says tabs and here you can set tabs. So I'm going to set tabs at five. Um, you have to go set and I'll get rid of that one. I don't want that one. And I want 10 set. Okay. You've got all the alignments there and we've got leader dots, which is what I'm going to do in a minute. So if I put name, tab, section, tab, department, enter, enter again. Now I'm going back in there because I want to put the leader dots on those two tabs. Leader dot two, set, that's for the five centimeter one. And then you've got to do it again to set for the 10 centimeter one and then you click OK and then you type Steve press tab one two three press tab department A enter John press tab two one 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 B so it's tabs with leader dots are great for creating lists like this nice and neat and easy to read you can um, obviously change the alignment if you don't want the alignment like that. So if I press enter, what you now need to do is clear it off. Because if you don't clear it off, they're going to be clear all from that point on. They're going to be they're going to be tabs all the way through the document at that at those markers with dots on. So you don't really want to do that. So to recap, indents are great for doing addresses like this and moving paragraphs and because it automatically wraps around on the indent tabs are great for decimal lists like this if you want to line up on the decimal or lists like this one at the bottom where you've got leader dots and you want to make it look quite smart i'm not suggesting for one minute if you're doing a table of contents if you're at university and things like that and you need to do a dissertation where you've got table of contents don't use tabs because there is a feature in word that will automatically do it but it does look similar to that in that it puts leader dots on it or one of the one of the styles puts leader dots on it so that's just a different video altogether but that's all i want to talk about on this one hopefully it's been of use to you and i'll see you on the next one thank you for your time